Hello, welcome back to my channel Programming with a Purpose. We are starting off with a new series of building Duolingo app in Swift UI. So first create a Duolingo project in Swift. It is of type app. We need to enter here the product name. After that, you can select a team organization identifier is going to be set automatically. Then an interface, which is Swift UI, no data is selected here. And after that, I'm going to select the place where I want to save the project. So here I am maximizing my Xcode window. And after that, I'm going to create my first view. But before that, let's let me show you some of the screens that we are going to create. So first is the Duolingo getting started screen with two buttons. Next one is basically the onboarding screen number one with a certain image and text. And this is the onboarding screen number two. So we are going to press the continue continue button to get here. So first let's build the first screen inside our Xcode project. So here in the assets we are going to put some of the assets that I'm going to show you here. These are the assets. I'm going to paste some of the link in the description box. The duo happy interested and all of these images are downloaded from internet. Obviously, if you are going to create your own app, you will have a Figma file or an Adobe XD or any other PSD file and you are going to copy all of these resources from there into your assets folder. Next, I am passing here the getting started view which I have created. And there is another group folder with the new utils that I have created. I am going to add here some of the helper files like an app constants file. It is going to create a struct text which is going to add here the static text that we are going to use inside our project and some name of the image files inside the assets folder. So copy all of these steps and then let's start creating our first view. So we have created our app constants file. We are going to add the relevant text and images as we proceed further with the development of this app. Next in the struct getting started view, I'm going to create a VStack which is nested inside a VStack. So let's create first an image which we have got from our images struct. It is now resizable and scaled to fit. Next we are going to add the text here, learn for free forever. We are going to adjust the font and make it bold. Next, we are going to create two of the buttons at the bottom of this V stack. First button is basically getting started. And the next button is basically I'm already a member or something like that. So this is the first button get started. We are going to set a font here, the color of the background, the color of the foreground, which is basically the text color of this button and other properties to make it basically look similar to that of the screen that I have shown you earlier. So here I am adding some of the padding to basically enlarge the button. It so that it covers more than half of the screen. So here I'm setting the background color. After that, I'm setting the corner radius, which is 10. So here the font size is set to 20. I'm fixing the error on line number 24. And after that, I'm going to basically encapsulate it inside a V stack. So that we can adjust the properties of these two V stacks inside a parent V stack separately. 
So here I'm going to copy paste this button and change the text foreground color, background color, and then add an overlay to it. So basically that will have a boundary of a green rectangular button around it. So let's adjust the padding here also. So here I am adding a padding to the top of this V stack so that the buttons move a bit lower and the top V stack moves a bit higher. You can add here a spacer also but that is going to create a lot of space between these buttons which is not going to look nice. Here I am folding the V stack and then we are going to add a navigation view on the top since we need to move to another view and add it to the top of this view. And here I am moving the navigation back button to true. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe so that you will be able to receive the notification for the upcoming parts and videos in future. Now, first view is completed. We are going to move to the onboarding view. Onboarding view is basically the view which is going to contain a simple text and image and then a continue button at the bottom. Next, I am going to move to my next view, which is the onboarding view. Here, we are going to basically compose two screens into one view. And we have created a variable with the name of is first view presented, which is true for the first view. And we are going to set it to false when we are going to update this onboarding screen into the second view. So, the V stack, and we have an H stack. And these are encapsulated in a navigation view. So first we need to create a button. It will be a back button which will be presented on the top of the screen along with some space. And after that we are going to create an image with some text and then a continue button. So this is all the view for this onboarding view for the first screen. So here we are resizing the arrow dot backward which is a system name image and then we have set its foreground color uh, if we remove the padding it is going to move towards the left so we have added the padding here and then a spacer so next let's add a z stack here in the z stack we need to add basically a speech bubble which will contain some text which refers to the duo speaking to us some words so for a speech bubble i am going to create another struct which is going to extend shape so let's create the speech bubble and then use it inside our main view so it has three variables that we need to add here one is the corner radius is bottom variable is not relevant for now but we are going to use it when we are going to create other views so there is a point location which means at which point the speech um, triangle is going to be shown. So I am going to show you towards the end of this shape uh, view completion that how this point location is going to work. We are going to call it inside the Z stack so that we will be able to see it on the screen how it looks like. So first we are going to implement the function path and we have created a variable path and then we are going to move it to a certain location from where we will start to draw our shape. So this is rect plus minimum of our x coordinate plus corner radius. And y is rect dot minimum y which is basically the top left corner. And I am returning path to remove basically the error that we are facing. So this is the top left corner we are going to write here the code. So we are going to add an arc here because we want the corners to be curved. So 
add all of the relevant properties here the start angle and the and end angle and let's see how it looks like on the right hand side or in our preview so here we are adding the y which is rec dot minimum y plus corner radius this is going to be the center point of this arc and then we are going to add a radius which will be the corner radius and then a start angle and an end angle minus 90 and minus 180 so you are going to see that the black curve is formed in the preview so if we set clockwise is equals to false you are going to see a circle but we do not want that we want a curved edge to our speech bubble so this is what we are going to get with clockwise true now we are going to create the left side of the speech bubble so we are going to add here a line to a certain point which is basically reg dot minimum x to reg dot maximum y obviously we are going to move towards the lower portion which is going to contain the maximum value of y so we have subtracted corner radius from that we are going to add here a little padding so that the view is clearly visible on the right hand side in the preview so this is how it's going to look like so next we are going to basically create the bottom left corner so we are going to copy the same code here and we are going to adjust the values of angles and center point so here rect max y is going to work because we are on the lower part of this rectangle you have added here the angles change them so the arc is created on the bottom left corner Now let's create the bottom right corner so we are going to add an arc here and it is going to contain the maximum x because we have moved towards the lower side of the rectangle and maximum y adjustments are made according to the corner radius and then angles are added you you are going to see a triangle here now we are going to add the right side of the bubble so once it's added you are going to see that the rectangle is going to be completed so this is how it's going to look like with little bit of adjustments we are going to basically carve here the top right corner we are going to add an arc here so once it's set you are going to see a rectangular basically body with curved edges and then we are going to add a small triangle which is going to display and locate the person who is speaking which is basically our duo so we have set is bottom is equals to true in this case and here we are going to add a line here basically we are going to add three lines here and then we are going to basically create a triangle on the bottom side of this rectangle and then to create a shorter form of the speech bubble we are going to add a frame over it which i am going to add in the main view so these are the three lines that i have added i am going to adjust its location the cg point and you are going to see that a small triangle is appearing on the bottom of this speech bubble so here I am going to basically show you how point location is going to adjust its value on the bottom side. So I have set it to 50. Now the speech bubble is completed. Let's move to the main view and customize this speech bubble and add the relevant text in it. So here I am adding the fill color to it which is going to be green. and then i'm going to add the text here since it's a z stack the text will be printed on the top of this speech bubble so if it's is first view presented we are going to put the text dot onboarding text one otherwise onboarding text two will be 
pasted on the top of this speech bubble. We are going to set the color of this text as well and a font size. Now the text is perfectly set. We are going to set the frame size, which is basically to limit its width and height. Since the next uh, text is going to be a bit longer, so we have set 350 width for the next view. And for this view, we have set it to 200. And the height is 100 in both of the cases. I've added some padding with the text. And then I'm adding a little bit of padding on the top of the it stack of the button and spacer that we have created previously. Uh, now let's add the image here. So the duo will be on the bottom side of this speech bubble. So here is the image. It is a bit different than the image that is present inside the app, but I just wanted to mimic the UI of that app. So I'm using an image that is closer to that one. So this is how you are going to add your character here. And then I'm going to copy the continue button here. And then I'm going to adjust the spacing here. So I'm adding some padding here to move it a bit lower. So this is how our view is going to look like. Now I have folded it and I've set the navigation bar back button hidden to true. If you do not set it, you are going to see a blue clickable button on the top of the screen. We do not want that we have our custom back button. So we will set it to as hidden true. So here I'm adding a navigation link here instead of the button. Since we want to move from get started button to the next location, which is our onboarding view. So when you click it, you are going to move here. And when you are going to press continue, you are going to see that you are going to move to the next view of the onboarding screen. Now here I am going to set another functionality to enable the back button. For that, we have a macro at the rate of environment that is going to give us a variable presentation mode. And using it, we can dismiss the top one, the top view from our view hierarchy which is basically our navigation view so here we are going to dismiss it inside the back button so next we are going to play the code and you are going to see that when we are going to press the back button it is going to move us to the get started view in both of the cases in first view and in the second view so the next uh, screen that we want to create is this one the language selection screen the button is disabled when none of the option is selected and this is the next screen so these two screens will be composed into one screen and i'm going to create a thorough tutorial to create those screens so stay tuned and do not forget to subscribe to my channel like and share this video and post your queries in the comment section also let me know what you really want to build using this duo learning app series and thanks for watching